Hello, are you studying for your insurance exam? Either life and health or property and casualty, personal lines or general lines? Do you want to learn about the terms aleatory, adhesion, unilateral, conditional? Well, we're going to handle those on this video. Be sure to stick around to the end and we'll cover a couple of practice questions also to get you ready to pass that test. Let's get started. Welcome back. So this is part two. Be sure you took a look at part one. I'll reference it right up there. And in part one, we talked about the elements that applied to all contracts, legal purpose, offer and acceptance, consideration, competent parties. Now in this video, we're gonna look at the elements that apply to insurance policies. That's going to be aleatory, adhesion, unilateral, conditional. We'll take a look at all of those. Let's go ahead and jump into it, starting with aleatory. What is an aleatory contract? An aleatory contract is a contract that is unequal. It's an unequal exchange of values and there's an element of chance. What does that mean? Well, let's say you go to your car insurance agent's office and sign up for an auto policy. You're gonna walk out of there with a policy that's gonna cover your car immediately. They have binding authority. Let's say you get into a car accident pulling out of the parking lot. Will the fact that you've only made one premium payment have anything to do with the amount of the claim? Or let's say you've had your auto policy for 20 years. Will the fact that you've been paying premiums for 20 years have anything to do with the amount of money that gets paid in the claim? And the answer is absolutely not because the contract is what? The contract is aleatory. And that amount of premium that you paid has no bearing on the amount that you receive in the claim. Now, the opposite of an aleatory contract is a commutative contract. That's a normal contract where both parties exchange equal amounts. That's like a contract to buy a house, contract to buy a car. But an insurance policy is an aleatory contract. It's an unequal exchange of values. Then we have a contract of adhesion. So what is that? The way we remember that is that a contract of adhesion means take it or leave it. A contract of adhesion means one party prepares the contract and the other party has to stick to it or adhere to it. Now, all that means in the real world is that it's a pre-printed contract or a boilerplate contract, which is honestly most of the contracts that we sign. And when we sign a contract like that, we don't have any power to negotiate that contract. So let's say, for example, you're meeting with your leasing agent and the leasing agent says, well, the rent's due on the 1st and there's a late fee starting on the 10th. Well, you say, well, you know, the 10th doesn't really work for me. Let's make it so the late fee doesn't start until after the 20th. The leasing agent is going to look at you and go, no, no, no. The contract says that there's a late fee after the 10th. Take it or leave it. Well, a insurance contract is very much like that. When you sign that insurance contract, if there's something in there that you don't like, too bad, so sad, that's the way the contract's written. If, for example, the client says to the agent, I know you said that this thing is not covered, but I think it should be, the agent's gonna have to say, no, I'm sorry, but that's the way the contract works. That thing is not covered, take it or leave it. It's not negotiable between the two parties. Also on the test, if you see this term ambiguity or ambiguous, now first off, what does that mean? That's something that's not clear. If there's something that's not clear in a contract of adhesion and there's a lawsuit, the party that prepared the contract loses. Well, in this case, that's the insurance company. And believe me, they do not like losing lawsuits. They make sure that what? Everything in that contract is crystal clear about what's covered and what's not covered. For the test purposes, all you need to know is this. If you see that word ambiguous or ambiguities in a question, the correct answer is going to be adhesion. It couldn't be anything else. Now, the next term we have here is unilateral. Now, unilateral says that only one party is bound, and that one party is the insurer or the insurance company. You, the insured or the policy owner, you're not bound in that contract. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that in that contract, only one party can be sued. Which party? The insurance company. 
If the insurance company doesn't pay the claim and you think they ought to, you can sue the insurance company. If you, for example, don't make your premium payment, then the what? Then the insurance company cannot sue you because it is a unilateral contract. Now, most contracts out there are a bilateral contract where both parties are making promises that are legally binding in the courts. But in an insurance policy, they are unilateral because what? Only the insurance company is making promises, or in other words, only the insurance company could be sued in that contract. Now, the next term we have here is a personal contract. That means in a property casualty policy, homeowner's policy, auto policy, that the policy really covers the person. And all that means is that the coverage is really on the person, not the thing. If, for example, you sell your car, whoever buys your car doesn't get your insurance policy. We talk about having insurance on our home or insurance on our car, but really the insurance is on us because it is a personal contract, a contract between two persons. Now, in the life and health world, it works a little bit differently. It is not a personal contract. And what that does is it allows the policy to be sold. Because in the life and health world, the policy is between three parties, policy owner, insured, and insurer, then it's not considered to be a policy between two persons. And as long as the coverage stays on the insured, the policy owner can sell that ownership. That would be like a viatical settlement or something like that. We'll have a video on that later on. Now, the next concept is conditional. Conditional says some condition must be met. So what does that mean? Conditional means if blank, then blank which also means that the if thing has to happen first before the then thing happens. If you have children, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you kids don't blank, then I'm going to blank. Well, the if thing has to happen first before the then thing. So in the insurance world, that means that what? That means that, for example, in a life insurance policy, somebody's got to die before the policy pays out any money. The if thing has to happen before the then thing happens. That is conditional. Now, one of the if and thens that's in the policy is that if the person doesn't pay the premium in a timely fashion, then the insurance company is relieved of its obligation to pay the benefit. Now, we learned that under unilateral, if you didn't pay your premium, they couldn't sue you. But under conditional, if you didn't pay the premium, they can what? They can cancel the policy or lapse the policy. Now, the next concept is called utmost good faith. And this one just says that both parties in that contract have to be honest with each other. There can be no attempt to disguise or deceive. Then there is reasonable expectations, which simply says, if you make your premium payments, you expect those promises to be honored. Then we have value versus indemnity. A value contract is a contract that pays a stated amount of money. In the life insurance world, that would be like a life insurance policy which pays out a flat amount of money. In the property casualty world, that would be what's called an agreed value. Be sure to take a look at the video we have called loss valuation, and we'll go through agreed value there. An indemnity policy pays a reimbursement. It pays an amount equal to the loss, only an amount equal to the loss, because what? One of the basic principles of insurance is that you cannot profit from insurance. In the life and health world, that would be like a medical expense policy. Let's say you had a medical expense policy that would pay up to a million dollars and you go to the hospital and the bill's a hundred thousand. How much are they going to reimburse? And the answer is a hundred thousand and not a penny more because you cannot profit from insurance. In the property casualty world, if you have a loss to your home or a loss to your car, you're going to get what? Reimbursed for the amount of your loss, but not any extra because once again, you cannot profit from insurance. Then we have the terms warranty and representation. A warranty is a statement that is guaranteed to be true. A representation is a statement that is believed to be true or is substantially true. And all the answers to the questions on the application are considered to be representations, not warranties, which means that what? If the insurance company wants to prove that the person is lying, it is up to the insurance company to prove that was a material misstatement, in other words, it was a lie, rather than a representation, which is somebody saying something that they believe to be true. 
Now, what if somebody does say something that is a lie? Well, that would be this last thing, concealment. And concealment is where we have a failure to disclose a known material fact. That would be where the person doesn't tell the truth about, let's say, smoking. If somebody has an occasional cigar, they might be tempted to say that they're not a tobacco user. In the insurance world, if you use tobacco even a little bit, you are a tobacco user. There's no such thing as an occasional tobacco user. If you lie about that, if you don't disclose that known material fact, then what you're trying to do is defraud the insurance company, and that would be grounds for voiding the policy. Now, let's take a look at some questions like you might get on your state test. Here's the first one. When an insurance policy is written by the insurance company, the contract is, well, if it's written by the insurance company, that's going to be a contract of adhesion. Remember, adhesion says what? One party prepares the contract and the other party has to stick to it. It's a pre-printed contract. That's what adhesion says. So let's go process of elimination and eliminate the other answers. Well, what is a bilateral contract? Well, a bilateral contract, the opposite of a unilateral contract, means that what? Both parties in that contract are making promises. A unilateral contract is where what? Only one party is making that promise. And a conditional contract says what? If blank, then, then blank, which means that the what? The if thing has to happen first. Now, let's take a look at another question here that you might see on the test. This question says, an insurance contract is blank because it is the insurer's obligation to pay only if the risk assured against occurs. If they're talking about the if thing has to happen before the then thing happens, then they must be talking about conditional. Because what? The policy doesn't have to pay anything out until that bad thing happens. The if thing has to happen before the then thing. But let's do that process of elimination again with this question as well. So what is a valued contract? Well, a valued contract pays a what? It pays a certain amount of money, like a life insurance policy or an agreed value property casualty policy. What is unilateral? Unilateral says one party is bound. Only one party can be sued in that contract. Aleatory means what? Unequal. It's an unequal exchange of values, which means the amount of premium you paid doesn't have anything to do with the amount of the claim. What the question is talking about is obviously a conditional contract. All right, so that wraps up that concept. Now, if there's any other subjects that we can help you with to get you ready for that state test, please check out our other videos. We've got new ones coming out all the time. Also, if you felt like you got some value out of that video, please hit that like button, subscribe, and if you'd like, hit that notification bell. That way you'll see the new videos or be notified when they come out. Also, be sure to check out our website, mortonschools.com. And there we have online classes, live classes, review classes, practice questions for any of the states. And we can help you get ready to pass that test. Anything with insurance, securities, we're the best solution. Appreciate you joining us. And we'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you.